Good morning and welcome to today's online kapihan of the Samahang Floridel. Uh, Samahang Floridel is an association of seasoned publishers, editors, and journalists and is the organization behind the mother of all kapihans, the Kapihan sa Manila Hotel. I'm Joyce Pañares, a news editor of Manila Standard, and I will be your moderator for today's forum. Today, we'll try to flesh out the contentious issues surrounding the renewal of the franchise of television network ABS-CBN. It has been more than a month and a half since ABS-CBN went off air on May 5, after the National Telecommunications Commission ordered it to cease and desist operations. We are joined today by Buhay Party List, uh, Congressman Dito Achanza. Congressman Achanza, good morning, sir. Mabuhay. Magandang mga sa inyo. Mabuhay, sir. And this forum is very timely because I, un I understand the next hearing on the franchise by the House of Representatives is scheduled for tomorrow. So, Congressman Achanza, perhaps we can have your opening remarks first, please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nelly. Joyce. Joyce. Joyce, sir. Yes, sir. Joyce. Joyce. Yes. Uh, at the outset, let me clarify and explain. Ano ba ang proseso ng uh, renewal of a franchise C um, sa ating mga uh, rules of the house? Generally, of course, pagka-renewal, ang dapat nating uh, bigyang halaga ay yung bang uh, franchise C nakatulong sa ating bansa. Uh, pagpapakunlad ng ating bayan. Did they perform as a network for which they were given a franchise? Ganon sana ang simula ng ating uh, pagharap sa hearing na ito. Ngalawa, i-define natin. Ano nga ba yung hearing? What does hearing mean? What does it mean? Hearing is hearing and listening. Di ba? Uh, this, uh, this is not an investigative prosecutorial, inquisition of any sort. But rather, makinig tayo kung anong paliwanag nung nag apply Having said that, ang takbo po nitong investigasyon, or rather, itong hearing na nagaganap sa Kongreso, eh, parang investigasyon more than anything else. Prosecution uh, rather than hearing. Ang pinupuna ko po, yung aming uh, direksyon, ng procedures na sinusunod sa committee on franchises. Um, meron pong mga akusasyon na talagang maselan. Violations of the Constitution. O kailangan tignan. Tama po yun. After seven hearings, wala po tayong nakitang ebidensya ng sinasabing violation. On the contrary, uh, ABS has been absolved by uh, competent and authorized and legally created offices like Department of Justice, Immigration, um, even uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. There's mga allegation of violation of the Constitution. So therefore, walang napapatunayan up to now. Pero, Para bagang ang nangyayari, walang resolution yung question and answer. Walang termination, walang. Basta tuloy-tuloy yung akusasyon and hoping that people will believe the accusation even in the absence of solid concluding uh, or conclusive findings stated by duly authorized and created offices. Like may mga binanggit ko. Kaya pinun ako. Bakit ganito ang ating hearing? At saka, hindi parang paliwanagin ng issue or hinga natin ng, ng uh, paliwanag ang mga kinabukulan, but rather, inaapin natin ang mga testigo. I use the word browbeating. Iniisip ko, what is the proper, appropriate word that I can use? Na wala na akong maisip na mas maayos kung descriptive, accurate, up word for what is going on more than browbeating. Dahil talaga yung mga testigo are para bang considered guilty, prove yourself si innocent. Pero kabaligtaran ng nangyayari, ha? walang may present ng mga ebidensya itong mga nagpo-prosecute. 
ang hinihinga ng record, yung akusado o suspect. Maglabas kayo ng mga record. Kaya sabi ko, eh, fishing expedition ito more than a hearing. Saka nakakita ng ina, sabi ko, meron kayong ginagawang masama. Meron kayong ginawang masama. Ito, preba ko. Ganun sana. And I wanted to listen, as I, as I listened to them, and hoping meron sila ipapakita ng ganong ebidensya. But no, you study the uh, questioning of Congressman Barsaga, Congressman Marcoleta, Congressman Remulla. Pag-aralan nyo yung kanila line of questioning. Palaging uh, humahantong sa so, maglabas kayo ng record, uh, we will add you are demanding for the records of this year and the, this decision which should have been covered by minutes of the meeting which we would want presented. Why is the burden of, of innocent or proof given to the accused or to the suspect rather than the prosecution saying, ito po mga ebidensya namin, no? Ganyan, violation. Kung ganun ang takbo, eh, eh, we will listen to them. Pero kung takbo ay eh, paulit-ulit na accusation with no conclusion whatsoever, no admission of decision, on, on the basis of decisions of competent agencies of government, eh, nakakasawa na. understand more than 11,000 employees and their families, unfair to the Filipinos who are dependent on ABS-CBN for the accurate news delivery, information, entertainment. Hindi po naman tama ang nangyayari. That's the reason why I am taking a strong position of ending this uh, hearing. I, I still call it hearing, pero sabi ko sa inyo, this is inquisitorial. <laughs> <laughs> and voting on the matter. Anyway, this is not the decision on solely on the shoulders of uh, Congressman Margoleta, who was mon monopolized at the time of this hearing, and Congressman Remulla, who seems to be lording it over, strutting like a pickup. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's time to call a spade a spade. Let's vote on the matter and let's hear the voices, the collective voices of the majority of members of Congress. And whatever decision is made, we should respect it. Thank you, sir, for that uh, opening remarks. I think you covered a lot of, uh, of issues there. Uh, again, you, know, you, you mentioned that the hearing is no longer does not appear to be a hearing anymore, but more of a fishing expedition. And right. that uh, he used the term browbeating to describe how Congressman Marcoleta was uh, acting towards the, 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 the guests that were invited for the hearing. Uh, we have some questions for you, sir. Himayin lang po natin siguro muna kung ano po yung issues dun sa ABS-CBN franchise. And then we will ask also the media who might want to, uh, who have joined us today and might want to ask their questions to do so later. Sir, uh, may, maybe we can discuss Wait. first. Uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Let me just interject before we start the, um, the further explanation. Iliwanagin ko, ididiin ko, itong mga akusasyon, nagmula ito, Congressman Marcoleta, Congressman Barsaga, Congressman Remulla. Sa kanila nagmula ito. Ha? Hindi ito issue ng bayan. Hindi ito popular issue um, stated by the public or by the people. These are issues raised by members of Congress. Kaya nga po sila hinahayaang patunayan nyo inyong, ang inyong paratang. Mm. Now we can, uh, we can discuss the matter accepting the fact. Galing sa kanila yung akusasyon Serious violations of constitutional provision. Eh, Maselan po yun. Kaya meron silang paraang ipaliwanag yung kanilang akusasyon. Eh, hindi, po dapat, hindi, po, hindi po ba dapat ang nagpapatunay na ang pagkakasala ay eh, nagbibintang. Hindi po, yung, hindi po yung kabila o hindi yung general public. 
Right. The burden of proof has suddenly shifted. And Ang hinahanap ko, patunayan nyo. Patunayan nyo. And up to now, wala silang napapatunayan. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, lahat ng mga uh, dapat na sinusunod nating mga ahensya ay nagsabi na ng nagpapawalang sala dun sa akusasyon na hindi, hindi, hindi illegal but rather legal yung uh, ginagawa ng management ng ABS. So, saan tayo, saan tayo patutungo pagka ganyan? Ayaw nilang tanggapin yung paliwanag ng mga uh, author, authorities. At sino paniniwalaan natin? Sila. Eh, sabi ko nga sa inyo, I'm saying, you keep on going on a fishing expedition. You have not proven anything at this point. You are now, to me, ah, wasting the precious time of the people. Congress in particular, if we keep on going around in circles and we do not conclude this particular set of hearings. Thank you, sir. I think, again, I'd like to step back a little and maybe flesh out the, the at least four main issues surrounding the, the franchise issue. Uh, first, sir, maybe we can discuss a little on the issue of the citizenship of uh, Mr. Gabby Lopez that is being raised by your colleagues in the House. On the issue of PDRs, uh, the return of ABS-CBN to the Lopez's post-martial law, and the 50-year cap on franchises. Okay. All of these have been raised against the, uh, the TV network, sir. Raised and thoroughly discussed. So we should conclude now. Based on the, those four uh, very critical and serious charges. Tama po yun. Kaya, okay. Kaya po dapat, doon tayo mag-usap. Doon sa apat na kanilang bintang. Citizenship. Sabi ni Congressman Macoleta, ABS violated the Constitution, the provision banning any foreigner to own a media network in the Philippines. Tama po yung kanya provision of the Constitution, pero tinanong natin yung mga eksperto on the Constitution and earlier decisions of the Supreme Court on the matter. It's very clear unconstitutional provision limits the ownership of media networks to natural born Filipinos. So therefore the question is was was Gabi Lopez is Gabi Lopez a natural born citizen? Pinaliwanag po niya, inamin niya siya pinanganak sa Amerika pero ang kanyang tatay at nanay ay mga Pilipino. And under Philippine uh, laws and constitution, Filipinos or children born out of Filipino parents, father and mother, or father, automatically are natural born citizens under the principle of use sanguinis, the law of the blood, bloodline. If you are born with a Filipino father, you are automatically a natural born Filipino. You don't need to prove it. You don't need to go through any other effort. You are a natural-born Filipino. So, si Gabi Lopez, you know, Lopez po ba Filipino ama? Opo, tatay niya ay si Eni Lopez. Siya po ba ay natural-born? Natural-born. Siya po ba ay American? Sabi naman, ang sagot di, you know, Lopez, Americano po ako by birth. I was born in Boston, USA, when my father and mother were in the States and my father was studying and I was born in the States. Ang batas po naman ng Amerika, iba sa Pilipinas. When you are born in any American territory, any part of the United States or American territory, even in America, American flag carrying, American flag carrying ship, doon ka pinanganak, Amerikano ka, automatically. Kaya, sabi niya, by birth, eh, Amerikano din po ako. Hindi naman din inay. So therefore, the question was asked of the Department of Justice. Yung bang dual citizenship eh, illegal na magari ng uh, media network? Hindi po, sabi nila. Wala pong batas, sabi nun. So therefore, the issue of citizenship should have been given up right there. <laughs> Matagal po yan, tatlong araw, mga apat na hearing. 
Miikot-ikot doon sa citizenship issue, but the issue was resolved and answered squarely. Yun ang sinasabi kong para yatang waste of time na ito. Kung baga sa basketball ito, dribble-dribble na lang tayo. Kung sa football, dribble-dribble na lang tayo ng bola. Ayaw na ito, yun ang, sa, sa, ang, ang sagot at sitwasyon sa citizenship issue. Sir, on the PDR issue, there's a suggestion, PDR, there's a suggestion PDR, to look also into the PDRs of other broadcasting networks. What's your take on this, sir? Ayoko na pong isali pa ibang network. No? At I, kasi ang sabi po ng Securities and Exchange Commission, and from my own experience as a member of the Franchise Committee, when we were deliberating on the applications for renewal of franchises of other networks, eh, lumalabas lahat ng korporasyon na nangangailangan, nangangailangan ng dagdag puhunan. They resort to a legal instrument which is called the Philippine Depository Receipt where the foreign investor can buy into the operations of a corporation, Philippine corporation, but not necessarily allowing them to manage the corporation. They only buy instruments of investment. Tinanong ang Securities and Exchange, dumaan ba sa inyo itong mga PDR ng ABS? Opo. Legal po ba yan? That's within the purview and the, the provisions of law on investments in the Philippines. But they're foreigners. Opo. Pinapayagan po na sila specifically. So, wala na naman na patunayan doon. Dapat sirado na yan, di ba? And we go to another topic. Hindi rin. We, I think we spent about three sessions Three hearings on that issue alone. Pinipilit nila na illegal yan. We can prove it. Wala naman silang mapatunayan. Humingi sila ng record. Pingi. Saka na, yun yung sinasabi ko. Pero ka akusasyon, wala kang record ng akusasyon. Inihingi mo yung record ng akusado. Labas ninyo yung hearings of this meeting on these following days. Hindi <laughs> tama eh. Eh, the violations of due process are very clear. Kaya yun ang pinupuna ko na parang pinipilit na lang yung punto di vista ninyo na hindi naman, hindi naman talaga tama na ang pangyayari. Not because I am for the renewal, ha? but at this point in time, it's very clear, ABS franchise should be renewed. Kasi pati yung, pati yung issue ng bakit napunta sa inyo yung yung network eh pag eh, after martial law ang sagot diyan napakasimple eh kanila yung network eh kaya aking analogy kung ikaw may bahay maganda yung bahay mo maunlad yung kalagayan nag martial law kinamkam ng isang gam mo wala kang magawa dahil martial law pinuha at nag-normalize, nanalo ang revolusyon, anong gagawin mo? Hindi ko kunin muli yung bahay mo. O meron bang karapat na magsabi iba? Hindi mo dapat kunin yan. Bahay ng may bahay yan. Bahay, hindi, bahay ko ito eh. Sila ako mamkam, ako naman ay isinole lang sa akin. Ganon ang sitwasyon ng ABS network. The network was practically, practically confiscated. Matalino lang si Mr. Marcos eh. When he did all of these abuses, eh, meron siya pala laging legal basis and escape. Kaya, huwag na natin pag-usapan si Marcos. Doon tayo sa simpleng katotohanan. Ang ABS-CBN, when Marshall was declared, was very critical. But becoming critical already of the Marcos abuses administration. Kaya, nung nag-Marshall, kaya nung sila. In fact, you know, long si Mr. Lopez. Now, how do I know this? I was already uh, an active politician during that time. And I know, and against my, my um, natural uh, adherence to rule, the rule of law, kinulong si Mr. Lopez of more than four years, almost five years, na kung hindi nakatakas ni Mr. Jake Almeda Lopez, ay eh, nakakulong pa siguro hanggang ngayon, o kaya ay eh, nabulok sa kulungan, Mr. Henny Lopez. Tumakas, Punta ng Amerika, naging aktibo sa liberation ng ating bansa. 
Ngayon, ang sinasabi nila, bakit binalik sa'yo? E amin po yan. Eh. Even former secretary, uh, former Senate President, and really admitted that the Lopez Network was never transferred to another ownership. It remained to be a property of the Lopez's even in the duration of the 14 years of martial law in the country. O yun, di, resolve na rin yun. Pero sabi nila, hindi, ilegal ang pagkakasolid. Ni Pangulong Cory Aquino, kumahanap sila ng records. Noong uh, uh, PCGG, Joe Vicino, ang sekretaryo po na nag-testify sa lahat ng nangyari na ganap ay si Senator Joker Arroyo. Ang aking pong sina- panaw, eh kung sasaliksikin yan, talaga hahanapan nyo ng butas and recorded uh, data, eh di pa ipasampi na natin si President Cory, ipasampi na natin si President Marcos, dahil <laughs> Pasampin na natin si Joker Arroyo. Pasampin na natin si Joby Salonga. Birthday ngayon ni, ni Joby Salonga, incidentally. I'm taking his, using his name in vain. But yun ang kanilang puto ni Biste. Nagkulang ang PCGG o na-violate ang PCGG rules. O di, sampin na ninyo, yung chairman nun. My point is, that's 34 years ago, Joyce. Wala na tayong mga records na, wala na yung mga taong pwede mong ituro. Ikaw, nagkulang ka. Ano gagawin niyo? Kukulong niyo yung taong nasa kabilang buhay na. <laughs> so, this is a case of, to me, wasting official congressional time and the nation's time and the people's patience that is now bordering on exasperation. So we should resolve it. Wala silang napatunayan sa illegality or legality ng pagkakakuha ng mga lobes ng uh, Lopez Network. Yung pangapat na issue, lagpas na raw na limampung taon. Kaya Marcoleta lahat dito, lagpas na raw na limampung taon yung rangkisa ng ABS kaya hindi na pwedeng mabigyan pa. Not even one year more. Mali na naman. Mali. Dahil ang constitutional uh, provision, very clear. It says, in Article 12, Section uh, 11 on franchises. No franchise can be given that will last for more than 50 years. No franchise, but you can have a series of franchises. You can have, you can exist for 200 years, 300 years, as long as you are uh, using your franchise for the improvement of the Philippine uh, development plan and economy, mm-hmm. you can keep on getting franchises the government. There's a mind of Congressman Marcoleta. Only Congressman Marcoleta uh, <laughs> defines that particular provision in that manner. Not more than 50 years. After that, you cannot get. When Lo- the Lopez Group, and I also research on the matter, and dami pong korporasyon na lagpas-lagpas na isang taong taon na in existence, PLBT, Yang, uh, yeah, mali, mali. Marami, marami na, marami. sobra-sobra na to prove the point that the provision of the Constitution does not limit the existence of a corporation for more than 50 years. That's why I clarify that matter and stress it for the record. Ang ABS po ba'y nabigyan ng uh, pangkisa more than 50 years? Wala po, sabi ng abogado. For that problem violation. Pero let me go back in that particular hearing. Ang sabi ni Congressman Marcoleta, sa bigyan daw ang ABS ng more than 150 years, sometime in the month of June 1969. Sino mo yan, ha? Clearly manufactured only in the mind of one man. Sabi niya, you violated the Constitution when you got the 150-year franchise. Sabi <laughs> Congressman Bautista ng, top, ng ABS. Sabi niya, wala po kaming franchise ganyan. We have never been given a 150-year franchise. So, kung may private si Congressman Marcoleta, di ilabas niya, hindi pwede yung plain accusation, and then you 
wrestling issue. Nagpapaliwanag yung abogado ng Navy. Sabi niyo, ka na sasagot. Yes or no? Isn't that browbeating? You are using your position and your authority to disallow the witness and the defense the right to explain. Pero nung ako nagtanong, nagpaliwanag, sinama ko yun sa issue ko. Gumagawa kayo ng statement, ng accusation, na hindi niyo binibigyan ng panahon para magpaliwanag yung kabila, wala naman kayong private totoo yun. Gawa-gawa lamang ni siya yung issue. Hindi naman pwedeng ganun, Joyce. Ha? This is the Congress of the Philippines and this particular um, issue is of national interest. We cannot allow this to go on like this. So, clear, sir, <clears throat> to your mind, yung apat na issue say non-issues actually against abs -CBN. Yes, very exhaustively. Nahimay-himay na yan at pinagtalunan na yan. Pero ang naririnig natin, panig pa lagi, yung nag-aaksa, ako lang siguro nakasingit ng, ano, ng medyo matindi rin ng dating. Sir, sir, you use the term singit. Hindi ko naman tinindihan, hindi naman ako magiging makatotohanan. Mm. But I, I thank people like Congressman Sarate, Congress Rodriguez, Rufus especially, and Congressman Edsel Lagman. Congressman Lagman and I co-authored one of those resolutions, which is, we should be taking up. Pero nauubos na po yung panahon sa interrogation, yung aming resolution, very clear. Ang pumirma po ron, po-autos namin, walong put isang members ng Kongreso. 81 of us. Pero it's never even calendar to be taken up. Ang <laughs> resolution should have been the priority, even priority. Sabi namin, um, buksan na natin itong content. Act on it expeditiously. Eh, yung aming resolution na yan, final namin noong February pa, siya na pre-board. Sir, you mentioned the term uh, favor. Those so are pushing for the renewal of the franchise. Nahirapan ba kayo? Because your advantage of that uh, situation to monopolize, you know, in effect, the, the to their whatever plan they had. They'll just, just be in, uh, disconnected. <laughs> you have just been muted. The word is... Itong aming ginagawang session uh, by internet and by Zoom, this should not continue. We should all now report... Sorry, uh, copy, sir, your line. Sorry. Through the internet only. And only a selected few, selected few to be on the floor and good for our democracy. Kailangan dun tayong lahat sa whatever is going on. Point of order and uh, preference. Yeah. Pero ngayon, under Zoom, you will not even be allowed. What would you say on the question the proceeding? Uh, while scheduled to speak, is a solo.
Thank you. Question one of any manifestation. Is the reason why you use the What's and for the Yeah. And the rear. And I can cite you many. <laughs> Again, it's a classic procedure. We should now normalize as restaurants are normalizing. Life should be normalized. Lawmaking should be normalized. For ABS the, 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 I think it's really a race against time for them. Because by August, the, the network will have to retrench some of its employees if it's still unable to go back on air. So time, time is not really on their side. Do you think the House should move with a sense of urgency now and move, it, move this towards a plenary level discussion? Or I hope those who are opposing it and vocally blocking it unreasonably should wake up one day guided by the thought given to them by the Holy Spirit. Pag-usapan naman ninyo, isipin naman ninyo yung kalagayan ng libo-libong pamilya at possibly milyon-milyong Pilipino na apektuhan nitong pagsasara ng ABS. Kung ito'y masamang network, kung ito'y talagang nakakasira sa atin, walang problema. We should not, we should not allow it to continue. But admittedly, it has given Serve, serve the interests of the nation for so. Para bang ang ayon namin marinig yan. Walang walang connection yung mga sinasabi mo. Do medyo talaga nagdamdam din ako na. I respect that man, Jake Almeida Lopez, because I saw him under critical times and how he helped liberate the nation. Hindi binabasos ng gano'n yun. At sino yung nangbabasos? Abay naku. Of doubtful. Doubtful. Comparison even. Ang binasos nila. Si Ginoong Jake Almeda Lopez by saying, tama na. Narinig na namin yun. Parang hindi na kami interesado dyan. See, that's what I mean by how, how do we survive as a democracy if congressional proceedings are handled this, in this, this way. Thank you for your answer, sir. Uh, I think now we'd like to call on our uh, media colleagues who are present here. If you have questions, please uh, send them to the chat group or raise your hand so you can be called also during this uh, virtual cup behind. Sir, you mentioned that you know ABS-CBN has it's not a bad TV network. I I'm just curious on the issue of uh, distance learning. You know, because it's now the the new normal amid this pandemic. The president said he's inclined to procure transistor radios, and we have 27 million students, and this will translate to a major headache in terms of money and logistics. But on the other hand, you have ABS-CBN, which covers 19 million out of 21 million households, including those along the eastern seaboard with telling reason to allow ABS-CBN to resume operations. It can be part of the solution in terms of, uh, you know, informing the public. That's a major factor why we should hurry up the decision. We should, in fairness to uh, the, uh, our people, the students, specifically on this issue, talagang kailangan, aksyonan na namin. Dan kailangan natin, isang network katulad ng ABS, to help us through this pandemic period in delivering education to our children. Kung ito ay mananatiling sirado, pwede mo sabihin na, meron naman ibang network. Eh, pero stable ito eh. Tsaka established na itong network na ito. Meron ng mga loyalist following ito. Meron ng credibility ito. Unless you can destroy the credibility factor, it should be given the franchise now, considering that issue is coming up fast, the issue of educating our children. 
So I think uh, one more uh, aspect dito sa non-renewal pa ng franchise ng ABS TVN. Uh, uh, several media groups have have raised the issue of uh, press freedom in terms of when ABS CBN had to stop its operations. Ano po ang position niyo doon, sir? Eh, meron talaga malaking issue ng uh, pag-aalis ng press freedom when you close down, forcibly, forcibly close down a very, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest network, networks in the country in this manner. Let's follow the rules of law as I have been a stickler to it. Hindi yung basta arbitrarily on the decision and whims of two, three, four congressmen ay pwede nang gawin ito. The freedom of the press is also at stake in this particular issue now of the ABS-CBN. Pag ito'y nagtagumpay yung nais lang ng iilan by any time, sa 1972. When one man decided, ABS is closed down. Ganun na ganun. <laughs> yes, sir. Actually, that, ganun yung dating niya talaga sa media rin. The way, the way it happened. So, sir, kung sakali po, ano po ang feasible timeline to be able to close this uh, this hearing and you know, decide once and for all whether we're going to renew the franchise or not. Alam mo, Joyce, like I said before, when we first took up the issue publicly, it's a speaker's call. Speaker Kaitano, I understand, was interviewed. He again called me out, pointed out, uh, made you unreasonable though. Sino, sino unreasonable? Siya o ako? na sa kanyang balikat ang kapangyarihan at responsibilidad na ito. He cannot point to Chairman Alvarez of the Franchise Committee. The top decision maker of the Philippine Congress today, as before, is a speaker. If he says, tells Chairman Alvarez, resolve the issue now. I'm not even saying he should influence it. Resolve the issue now. Chairman Alvarez would go into action. I'm sure of that, 100%. But for as long as he is bulking and maybe even sulking <laughs> <laughs> of the issue, eh, ganito talaga. Noon pa man, eh, talagang sabi ko nga, speaker, noong February, I spoke on the floor. And I really called them out. Chairman Alvarez, Speaker Cayetano, do the people... Uh, justice. The hmm. issue is now fast coming up and the ending of this franchise is on May 4th. Pag-usapan na natin to. We have plenty of time. Pero pag naubos po yung ating panahon, argabiado po rito ang katarungan. O yan. Hindi ko malaw. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung deadma. Yan ang word ng mga bata. Deadma. Parang walang narinig. Inabot pa tayo ng pandemic. Yeah. Yun, naman da, yun naman ang dahilan. Eh, paano? May pandemic na. There are more important things to tackle. Yeah, that, that is why we are here now. Pero now that we have already taken up seven hearings, mm. and tomorrow we'll take up the eighth hearing, or maybe nine, eh, pwede nang pagbutohan to. And nakik-speaker kay Tane yan. I'm addressing it. Pass the ball to anyone. You are holding the ball. A quick follow-up question from Julia Dasa. She said, uh, can a handful of representatives of the people delay the hearings until it's too late, meaning August? And what can you and your colleagues do? That's exactly what's going on, Joyce. And to my friend Julie, that's exactly what's going on. A handful of people uh, actually is in control of the whole procedures. And wala kami magawa uh, except <laughs> to do the best that we can. But people are watching. 
those who abuse their authority, meron din pagbabayaran yan. Alam nyo, lahat kami tinatawag na kagalang-galang. We should deserve that word. Honorable. Kagalang-galang. Hindi kagulang-gulang. Opportunistic. We should be honorable. And I, I, this is one of my favorite description of responsible elected officials and abusive local of, uh, elected officials. Yung mga responsible elected officials, pwede natin tawagin halal. Yung mga abusadong mga public officials, tawagin natin hangal. Wala kayo pupuntahan. Ang buhay, sabi nga ni Kuya Kim, ay weather-weather lang. Sir, uh, two quick follow-up questions. Uh, first one, do you think uh, Speaker Cayetano has the political will to act independently on this issue and to act quickly, as quickly as possible on this issue? And the second one, uh, phone-in question, sir. Sino raw po ba ang nasa likod ni Congressman Marcoleta? Yung number one issue, yung meron ba rapatan, may kapangyarihan ba si Speaker Cayetano? He has. He's the speaker. He carries the weight. He's the leader of the majority. We're presuming that he was chosen mm. by the majority. For sure. So therefore, he controls. He controls the majority. Mm. If the majority decides to take it up now in the plenary, that, that's it. Next session, pwede ng plenary kami. Ngayon, sino ba nasa likod ni Mr. But not, not everybody agrees with him. <laughs> you know, Congressman Marcoleta. <laughs> Sir, this is a phone in question from Miss Pat Pidasa, sent through her, through Miss Julia, of course. Are those seven to eight hearings, eight tomorrow? The longest ever in Congress yes. when it comes to a franchise. On history, ko, pinak oh, ah, on, on record, it's the longest oh, hearing. hearing. Yung mga prangkisang binigay na, ng Congreso, which uh, some of them are even doubtful and up to now have been proven ineffective, useless. Mga tatlo, apat na hearing. Tapos na. Mga iba nga dyan, isang hearing lang. Eh. Pero, eh, ito, walo na. Wala pa ako nakikitang end in sight. So, baka abutin pa ito ng Agosto. Kawawa naman yung mga empleyado na mabibigyan ng temporary leave or permanent or whatever. Some kind of a leave of absence. Eh, lalo magugutom ito mga kababayan natin ito. Maraming issue na nagdidictate, we should resolve it now. Ang napaka-special naman, sir, ng ABS-CBN franchise for lawmakers to take this long you're actually spending taxpayers money to every time you uh, hold the hearing i said that we're wasting yeah. people's money i feel i feel it's a waste of time when the accusers refuse to resolve the issue upon hearing the uh, authorities speak up on the matter i only let tanga pa para tayo matatapos dito yung chairman who claims to be impartial, but obviously is uh, forced to take certain positions he may not even agree with. Hindi nang nangyayari ngayon. Kaya, naka-suspended animation. We don't hear anything but the dribbling on the floor of Speaker Keita. Ano? Sir, uh... A few questions before we can probably wrap up this forum, sir. Um, tanong ko lang, sir. A lot of the issues raised against ABS-CBN have already been answered also by government agencies themselves, di ba? Including SEC, BIR. Ah, pa paano ba yun, sir? Pa paano yung balancing act doon? Kung mismo government agency na ang nagsasabi na non-issues ito, hindi ba dapat Congress should also take, it, take this into consideration? We should. We must. Sino pa ba naman pakikinggan natin? The Supreme Court. Ang mga desisyon ng Supreme Court. Malinaw na na-take na, na, na up na itong mga issue ito in the past. 
and accurately presented by lawyers of the ABS CBN. Pero kung hindi pakinggan yung mga Supreme Court interpretation of the Constitution, eh marunong pa si Mr. Marcoleta sa, <laughs> sa buong Supreme Court. At malinaw na malinaw sa Constitution. Ang letter ng Constitution, hindi doubtful, malinaw. Eh hindi mo tinatanggap, hindi raw. He has a right to interpret it the way he wants. Man, okay sa akin yun. I have no quarrel with that. Interpret it the way you want it, Congressman. Pero, yung chairman, dapat mag-rule. Tatapos na yan. You don't believe it, you don't accept it, but this is my ruling. That's how it should be. Ito hindi. Pag sinabi ni Mr. Margaleta, I'm not happy yet. Tahimik silang lahat doon. Kaya sabi nga ng marami, ako lang yata ang nagsabi ng katotohanan na si Mr. Magkoleta na susunod. Hindi ang Kongreso. And that is really, really damaging to the institution. In defense of democracy, when you are all under martial law, the voice of Nito Atienza, I love you, Julian. I love naman mga kaibigan ko. And I'm happy that we succeeded in reinstalling democracy in the land. Hindi alam ng mga bata yan that Congress was abolished during martial law. Abolished. Padlocked. Like what Cromwell did to the British Parliament. So there was no democracy. And Marcos resorted to yung mga batasang bayan, mga semblance of a democratic process. But Philippine Congress, composed of elected representatives of the people, was padla. And we succeeded in reopening it. Not to make a mockery of lawmaking. Kaya, pardon me if I get uh, very, very angry when I see these things happening today. This is not what I fought for. This is not what democracy is all about. I used to say it, I say it again. This is democracy. Uh, step up the forum. There are no more questions for from closing remarks from you, sir, before we end this. You know, Joyce, I thank this forum, Capians Manila. It is the same forum which we used to utilize when we were fighting for freedom. Capians Manila, the Manila Hotel. Uh, a place where we could talk freely and what we said somehow many of them get published although in a very very careful manner because uh, you arrest the writer if you say that he is a bag in his mind of the people who have been dictated I myself two times I was out of the way with a stern warning if I keep on fighting martial law I will be permanently, and I knew what that meant, uh, disappear. I was just telling myself, you will not be able to coerce me. I'm ready to do anything to defend democracy, defend the truth, and the rule of law. Kaya, salamat sa inyo. Pero pa tayong kapian sa Maynila. Wala naman tutukutok sa bahay niyo mamaya o sa opisina ninyo, katulad na ginawa sa akin noon. Mr. Atienza, yes, you are invited. O saan? Invitado po kayo sa Camp Crummy. <laughs> Marami po schedule eh. I'm sorry to decline. Eh, hindi po. <laughs> you have no way to decline. You are joining us. Wala, kay, wala tayong ganyan ngayon. So right freely, and I appeal to our brother, Communicators, media men, broadcaster, journalists. So let me know what you think is right.
the and the rest of those congressmen who are defending the uh, rule of law rather than just sit on the fence and do nothing when we lose this freedom then you will know what i'm saying we don't want to lose it once again we have to fight for it all the way thank you joyce thank, thank you for thank all the you so much sir thank you so much congressman Achanza, and to all our media friends who joined us today we look forward to quicker action from congress on this issue uh, until next time, thank you and stay safe, everyone.